Last month, we covered the basics of how to EQ your stereo speakers using Room EQ Wizard. Today, it is all about that bass. So settle in for part two of our How to EQ series, How to EQ Your Subwoofer. Before we dive in, I have to spray myself down with some Haterade repellent and remind the experts in the room with your keyboards at the ready that this video is an introduction to subwoofer equalization. Some of the techniques discussed in this video are the ones that I have used over the years and that have served me very well. Are there other more advanced ways to tackle subwoofer EQ? Well, of course they are. And if you feel your way is better, you are welcome to share your knowledge in the comments below. Just keep it respectful. Of course, if you missed our last video or you just need a quick refresher on how to install, launch, and set up RoomEQ Wizard, which is free, by the way, be sure to watch uh, this video uh, before you get started. Working with a separate preamp and amplifier, a stereo pair of speakers, and a subwoofer, we can get started. Same as last time, we will need our calibrated microphone, mini DSP device, the necessary cables to connect everything together, and of course, a laptop or computer running RumiQ Wizard and the mini DSP software. A quick word on cables, because we're going to experiment with subwoofer placement before we get down to business, I recommend picking up a pair of 25 to 50 foot long analog interconnects for your subwoofer in order to give yourself maximum placement flexibility. If you end up with your subwoofer being placed closer to your equipment in the end, you can always swap out the long cable for a shorter one to keep your install nice and tidy. Now I'm using the Mini DSP SHD, but if you have the more affordable 2x4 HD, you can still follow along. My Mini DSP is connected between our preamp, which in my case is the AudioLab 7000A, and my amplifier, the AudioLab 8300XP. So let's connect one of our long RCA or XLR cables to the third output on the Mini DSP device. On the SHD, it looks like this. On the 2x4, it's going to look like that. Next, connect the other end of the audio cable to your subwoofer's left or right audio input, and no, it doesn't matter which one. Now plug your subwoofer into the nearest electrical outlet. Now place your calibrated microphone, we're using the U-Mic 1, at your primary listening position at ear height and in the 90 degree position. Connect the mic to one of your laptop's USB inputs. Next, connect your laptop to your mini DSP using the supplied USB cable. Now if you need a longer cable, I recommend picking up a USB cable extender like this one, which we're going to link to below. With everything connected, go ahead, launch the Mini DSP software and RoomEQ Wizard. Now inside Mini DSP software, click Sync in the upper right corner and go ahead and select Preset 1 because this is where we saved our left and right main speaker EQ settings from the last video. Now let's add a subwoofer. Go ahead, change the name of output 3 to subwoofer 1 or whatever name you prefer. You can call it Snoopy, I don't care. Once you've named the output, set both the left and right routing options to on and turn off the left and right speaker inputs. We do this so that we're only seeing our subwoofer's response when taking measurements. We're going to switch over to RoomEQ Wizard, but don't close out the mini DSP software yet. Inside RoomEQ Wizard, click the Preferences icon in the upper right corner. Again, make sure all the input-output device settings are set correctly. If you need a refresher, there's the video. But under Levels, select Use Subwoofer Test Signals to check set levels. Now, go ahead, close out the Preferences box, and click the Measure icon in the upper left corner of your screen. If you already have your subwoofer placed or you can't move it about your room due to, well, life, go ahead, bear with me. For everyone else, let's start by putting your subwoofer just about anywhere in your room, even behind your listening chair if you want. Most people like to put their subwoofers in corners, which isn't necessarily a bad idea, but that doesn't automatically make it the best choice either. Now I'm going to start by putting the sub at the front of our room and off to the right side. With my subwoofer in place, I'm going to set the volume dial on the sub to about 50%, adjust the crossover to as high as it's going to go and set the phase to its default setting. Now back in our computer and inside RoomEQ Wizard's measurement box, we're going to label our subwoofer. We're going to set the start frequency to 15 and the end frequency to 200 Hz. Because we're sending both left and right signals to our sub under output, you can select either right, left, or both, doesn't matter. 
Click check levels to make sure we're getting 75 dB test tone out of the subwoofer. If your sub is too loud, go ahead, turn it down on the back until you get a reading inside Room EQ Wizard of 75 dB. Once you see 75 dB, you are good to go. Click start and take your first subwoofer measurement. Now that we have our first measurement, let's see what we're dealing with. First, we need to adjust the limits of our graph so that we can see our subwoofer's response more clearly. I recommend setting the left limit to 15 hertz and the right limit to 300. There. Now, you can see this particular sublocation results in a pretty peaky response. We can identify three nulls at our listening position. The first occurring around 23 hertz, the second between 30 and 40 hertz, and the third between 90 and 130 hertz. In my opinion, this is not an ideal location for this subwoofer in our room. The Klipsch RP1000 is capable of playing down to 19 hertz, and in this location, the room's interference will result in less bass. We would have to apply way too much EQ to try and correct its response, and even then, we may not get the results we want. This means I need to find a better location for my sub, and if you're getting similar results, try other spots in your room until you find a location that produces a graph that appears more linear, like like this one. In our room, the best place for a subwoofer is along our left wall, roughly 10 to 11 feet back of our left main speaker, resting in relative alignment with our primary listening position. Placed here, we can see that the Klipsch sub measures pretty well. At 75 dB, we get a relatively flat or consistent response. Now there is a dip between 30 and 70 hertz, but within the dip, the response is linear, which is something we can work with. More importantly, we can see that the Klipsch, at least in our room, is actually overperforming, hitting 18 hertz, not 19. So those of you wanting a review of this subwoofer, just saying, pretty impressive. Time to EQ our results. Click the EQ icon at the top of your screen. A new window appears. First, we need to set the graph access limits. Set the left limit to 15 and the right to 300. Now select the mini DSP from the equalizer menu on your right. Click the target settings from the drop down menu. Under target type, select subwoofer. Set the base management cutoff to 100 Hz and the low frequency cutoff, labeled LF, to 15. We're going to allow some room curve by leaving the box checked. Next, click Calculate Target Level from Response. See how the blue target line of our projected response has dropped down to fit more within the peaks and valley of our subwoofer's in-room response. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the target level more and enter a value of 70 dB because I want as flat a response as possible. Under Filter Tasks, we want to match the range from 18 to 100 Hertz. Leave all the boosts in their default settings and click Match Response to Target. See the four numbers above the graph? These are the filters that RoomEQ Wizard has created to EQ our subwoofer. If you select the predicted box under the graph, you will see the predicted results of your subwoofer's response using the filters we just created, making the sub's response pretty darn flat. Now this next step is probably gonna seem a little bit familiar, especially if you watched our part one video, because we're going to be entering our EQ filter values into the mini DSP software. So go ahead, click the outputs tab. Next, go to the output we labeled subwoofer earlier and click the PEQ label. Enter your filters into RoomEQ Wizard inside the mini DSP's PEQ pop-up window. Start with EQ1 and end with EQ4 since we have four filters. Now that the filters have been entered, go back to Room EQ Wizard and measure your subwoofer again. Now you may need to adjust the volume on the back of your sub once the EQ filters have been input. Measure your sub again and see the change in its response. Ours is nice and flat. One of the last steps in this process will be setting the crossover point inside the mini DSP software so that the subwoofer blends more seamlessly with our main speakers. Looking at the corrected response of our main speaker, the KEF R11 Meta, we can see that it drops off due to a known node in our room at around 40 hertz. Identifying where your speakers naturally roll off or where they may be impacted by your room is necessary to find the best crossover point for your particular system. Yes, that means something that we covered in 
Going back to the Mini DSP software, click X over below PEQ. Now, both the high and low pass filters are bypassed by default, so you want to change the low pass filter so that it says bypass. This is going to turn the gray sloping line to the left of the graph yellow. Because the KEFs have no real bass below 40 Hz, we're going to set the low pass cutoff frequency to 60 Hz. Now, why 60 Hz and not 40? Well, for me, it's because I want some overlap, so there's no chance for a gap in the overall response between my speaker and my sub. You can experiment with whatever setting you want. This is just how I do it. Every speaker, every subwoofer, and yes, every room is going to react differently. I promise, I really do, I promise we are almost done. But before we take our final measurements in the routing section of the Mini DSP software, you need to remember to turn on the left and right channels and then go back to RoomEQ Wizard. Inside RoomEQ Wizard, find that preferences icon and change the levels option to use main speakers instead of subwoofer. Now, close the preferences window and click the measure icon. Set the start frequency range to 15 and the end frequency range to 20,000. Go ahead, check your levels once more, adjusting the volume if you need to until you see 75 dB, and then you can click Start. Now you should see a complete 15 to 20 kilohertz measurement of your subwoofer and your speakers. Our results now show a fairly linear response, one that follows a gentle downward slope as we move from the bass to the treble with no big gaps or dips. This is what you want to see and proof that everything has gone according to plan. But before you close out anything and disconnect your laptop, don't forget to save your measurements inside RoomEQ Wizard and do the same with your Mini DSP profile. This way you'll have both if you ever need to refer to them again later. So there you have it, part two of our How To EQ series. That wasn't too hard, was it? I, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you're extra, extra nice, maybe we'll tackle multiple subwoofers and other adjustments next time. You know what to do. Drop a like, subscribe, and let us know what you would like to see in the comments below. So that's it for this video, but before we go, you had something to say? I don't. <laughs> I really don't. I don't. I've got nothing. Okay. I just want to say you did a great job. And yeah, what? don't look so, so surprised. <laughs> not, knock that off. Normally you start with, but you forgot some stuff. Well, yeah, I know, but you, you didn't, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you forgot anything. I don't oh, know. Oh, trust me. Uh, there's probably, there's at least six, if not a dozen comments going, what we really wanted was the two subwoofer video, not the single subwoofer video. Like the video. And, and leave a comment and let us know what you would like to see next. If it's two, using two sub, subwoofers or more than two subwoofers, or if you have another idea of mm -hmm. something you would like to learn that Andrew can put together for you, you know, in the way that he does, which is going above and beyond, I swear, what anyone else is doing, um, let us know. Yeah. And if you have other ways that you've found helpful, just you know, let those, let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone else reading your comment will find your way uh, helpful and will follow along, you know, it's yeah. just help others. Yeah. It's, it's fine. We're, we're totally cool with that. Just be nice about it. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that's it. That was it? Yep. We can, we can sign off. We can sign off. Well, you heard the lady. Uh, yeah. So that's it. That's it for part two of our How to EQ Your System series of this one dealing with subwoofers. So, what'd you think? What'd you think? Let us know down in the comments below because that's how you get a part three. So, uh, yeah, sound off. Uh, if you like this video, also, like Christy has said, uh, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead, ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy's left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we both do here. And both of us, thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File for other goodies. Um, and that's it. That's it. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is who? You. So uh, happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.